Hey everybody, this is Stephen Moore. We are now in the rendering phase of the trebuchet build. I'm going to talk about the setup uh, of the environment and the camera, and then we're going to do a brief rundown on local versus cloud rendering. So let's get started. Let's get right to it. Let's just do it. All right, I'm just going to go straight into the render um, workspace for this and you can see that it automatically created a few um, renders for us uh, and these are all version one of it where we only had the um, bucket and potentially the hinges uh, attached uh, we're gonna actually add a few more into here but before we do that um, again you can click A or, or this button and you can have access to all the materials that we've already covered in the last um, tutorial. So I'm not going to do that this time. Instead we're going to cover the scene settings. Um, the first thing that I tend to do is I just I don't bother with this first uh, tab. I go to the second one and I select the environment that I want to simulate my piece being in. Um, there's cool light. Uh, this is one I downloaded by just going if you go to the bottom of the list there's these downloads. You can add a couple extra. Uh, or you can even attach, uh, you can even import your own uh, HDRI image um, into it. But we're going to just do the ones that we have here. So I kind of like rim highlight and photo booth. I'm um, just going to select rim highlight for now. And I'll give it a second, or I can drag it up here, and it'll take a second and it'll adjust my environment. Um, it's still not actually rendering but you can see a preview of what the rendering would look like um, here. Now if we go back to the settings tab we can change background from solid color to environment and that didn't look like it changed a lot but when we change the angle of the camera you can see that now we have these fuzzy lights uh, in our environment and that's pretty cool. Uh, we can turn on and off the ground plane that'll just basically give you um, a shadow for it to fall to and if you use flattened ground what it's doing is it's basically raising the environment up so that uh, it's easier to show you in the dry lake bed one because that has a ground so what it'll do flattened ground and then you can see that it kind of is away from the flattened ground and now it's on the ground so that's kind of cool if you want to do something like that uh, it creates like a like a ground plane for your for your thing to exist on. <clears throat> Actually, we'll stay with the uh, dry lake bed because it's it's pretty cool to have that. Um, all right. So other things that you can do in here, uh, you can turn on and off reflections with the ground, uh, which is sort of weird for this particular one. So we're going to turn that off. But before we do, we have the roughness, which will make it more. Um, we kind of covered it in materials, but basically it'll make it less sharp of a reflection, uh, less mirror-like and more um, diffused light. I'm um, going to turn that off for this one. Um, the camera we can select uh, like we could in the other environments, orthographic, which is a, there's no perspective, perspective, and then ortho with, or perspective with ortho faces. That means every time we move to uh, the side or the front or the top or the bottom it'll automatically pop into orthographic and when we're not in one of those views it'll be a perspective view uh, that's fine with me I don't care um, and then focal length will simulate the lens length of a camera so you can change just kind of the way that it sees things and the larger the focal length the closer it's going to be to an orthographic view and the Long, the shorter the focal length, the more you'll see the perspective. And it gets kind of weird when you get out to the extremes. Um, a good rule of thumb is anywhere between 50 and 90 is usually pretty good for uh, a render as far as what your use, what your eyes used to seeing in the real world. 50 is pretty close to what your eyes used to seeing. Exposure will make it make your environment brighter or darker um, and since these are HDR images they'll be more true to reality 
Uh, then we can turn on depth of field. Um, and then like the warning is saying, it won't work until we go into the ray tracing. We actually turn on the rendering. Um, you can't see depth of field until it starts ray tracing. Uh, we can so, I think that's probably a good time to start talking about that. Um, we can go to enable ray tracing. We'll turn that on and it'll actually start calculating light bounces um, in an iterative fashion. Um, and since we have, by, uh, since I turned on the depth of field, center of focus is kind of um, hard to define right now. We're not sure where it is. So I'm just going to pick a point on the trebuchet. Now we'll see that it's focusing here and the blur is going to be kind of um, how blurry it gets from that point out in, in the Z depth of the camera, which means that anything past that focal point gets blurry, anything closer to the camera than that focal point will get blurry, and this is just how blurry or not it gets. Um, for the sake of this video not chugging, I'm going to turn off depth of field while we do this uh, so that we can get uh, a decent render out as quick as possible. Um, and then we can also define our viewport aspect ratio. And by that, um, I mean, if you go to a one-to-one -one square, that means that it is the same height as it is width. So we select that. And now we have um, a, we have it shading out things that it won't um, be part of the final image. I'm actually going to limit the resolution to 20 for the sake of this. Um, so that it's quickly, it'll be blurry for you guys, but it'll be quicker for now uh, on my computer. Um, and widescreen is like what you would expect to see in a theater, 16 by 9. Uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, and then it has it tells you kind of what this is. Present 4 by 3 is the old TV. Um, CRT TVs were 4 by 3 uh, ratio. Landscape will give you. <clears throat> I'm really I'm not familiar with landscape as much and portrait. That's basically what you're gonna see uh, if you go to a studio or something. If you want to take a picture of a person, uh, and it looks to me like portrait is actually the same as what you would get if you went if you took a camera and you had standard film stock. Um, I generally uh, gravitate towards 16 by 9. Uh, because I come from uh, a animation background and I just I kind of like that aspect ratio. So now I'm going to fiddle around a little bit with my composition. I'm going to put the object sort of in the center and I kind of like that. And um, while we're talking about this, uh, I'm going to close this settings um, and then open up the what do I need to open up? I'm trying to remember. Oh, the um, I'm gonna turn it off because I need this window, the ray tracing window. I'm gonna put that back to 100 for now, and that'll chug away for a little while until it feels that it's reached the maximum um, amount of iterations it needs to take in order to get a true to life light bounces without all these um, speckles happening. Um, this is where I'm going to talk briefly about cloud versus local. Local is what it's doing right now where it's actually using my either CPU or GPU to um, compute the light bounces and create a realistic render and if I want to um, I can do cloud rendering and that'll actually send the information to Autodesk's servers and they will render it and then send the final image back to me. Uh, the reason why you do local is because you have complete full control over the final image but you have to let your computer sit and chug away and crunch the data while you do nothing else. Um, the reason to do cloud is you don't have to uh, do only rendering. You can start working on something else and let it figure it out for you. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really, really easy. 
Uh, so you just select cloud rendering and then what it'll do is it'll capture where your camera has been placed and um, since we've already set up a couple of these things we don't have to uh, change them but um, we have an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 but this is a non-standard um, width versus height that you would you wouldn't normally see standard HD I believe is um, 1280 by 720 and since we've already established the aspect ratio it'll it'll it knows to change the height appropriately um, you can change what kind of output file you want it to be given back to you as um, we can leave it at advanced or native uh, native is I'm really not sure what the difference is between these I'm not yeah I'm not gonna worry too much about it um, oh, it also has the um, uh, the ratios that you might want. So there's the this is the web different different sorts of uh, image sizes that you might find. You can also go to presets and just pick one. Oh, so I was wrong. It's not uh, 1280 by 720. That is uh, standard. Or not standard, but um, that's not full HD. That's the that ten. That's the 720p. Um, full full HD is 1080 by 1920, um, and that's that'll give you a pretty big image. Uh, let's go ahead and let it chug away. I'm gonna hit render, and um, it's been sent to them. It says once the render is complete. Click the thumbnail, the rendering gallery, and you'll see the full image. Uh, we'll do one of those from that angle. We'll do a nice so we can see that angle. And I'm just going to choose the big guy again. And. For the last image, let's change the environment to grid light, just to have a different, um, different lighting scheme. And I'm actually going to do something strange and bring my exposure up a bit. Come on, my friend. Yeah. And I'm going to cloud render that one too. Hmm. I'm not totally sure why. I think it's because I already have some stuff in the pipeline. Uh, it's not giving me the option to do full. Uh, I know because I'm not in the right. There we go. And that'll create. Uh, I'll send it off to them. You can see I already have one of them coming back to me. I don't think it's done yet. I think it's still crunching that data. Let's see. Yeah, it's still rendering it, so it's just kind of giving me a uh, update on how well it's doing. So I will pause the video and come back when the all the renders are complete.